on and we're oh, live. Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ryan and Grant for another episode of Grant Teach Me Something, episode 22. So first off, thank you for tuning in today. Tuning in to the, turning in, turning in. in another episode, episode 2222 of Grant Teach Me Something, which we are now talking about selling notes. How you gonna sell them notes? Did you say salad notes? Or? Salad notes, yeah, I like. <laughs> it's got a, a, notes. a note of salad in it. Anyway, let's get to um, it. I like, you know, I like having notes, right? I like creating notes. That's my main strategy. That's one of the things that you'll hear me talk about a lot is seller financing. How are we going to create these mortgages for people, put them into a long-term plan for ourselves? But one of the things that not everybody really understands about this world is that you are somewhat liquid. Um, mm -hmm. One of the fears that people have when they get into a long-term mortgage, whether you are a private lender lending money to investors like us, or you are an investor like us lending money yeah. to a, uh, an owner-occupant, you do have the way to cash out. Before we get too far. Mm -hmm. Can we break it down like just Ryan is a complete idiot? Sure. What is a note? A note. So a note is going to be your mortgage, right? Basically, any kind of mortgage on a property is going to be the simplest form of it. Essentially, any time that you're creating a lending scenario where you have you say, "Hey, I'm going to pay you back at eight percent over ten years or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the terms are." that's going to be your note. So the reason why I broadened that out to say even if you're a lender, a private lender lending to investors or if you're an investor lending with like seller financed mortgages, it all is the same thing. It's a note. It's it's saying I'm going to give you X amount of dollars and you're going to give me interest and payments in return. So it's the paper. The paper, right? Yeah. And the paper we can use to to kind of broadly describe, hey, there's a note there's also going to be an instrument that says, "Hey, if you don't pay me the money that's that you say you're going to pay me from the moat, from the moat, because we're in Renaissance times, uh, then I get to foreclose on you and get this property back, right?" Um, so we do want to have good paper. Also, when we when you hear people in in talking about selling notes, saying, "Hey, we got to have good paper," they're also talking about an even broader spectrum of stuff. Hey, when you're going to sell a house to an owner occupant, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of steer the conversation from this point forward. I've addressed the fact, hey, we, you know, this this also applies to a private lender lending to an investor. But I'm going to kind of steer the conversation into the direction for the remainder of the day of uh, we are an investor selling a house with owner financing, creating a mortgage that way. When you hear people refer to having good paper in that context. Part of what we're referring to. Do we not have audio? Real quick, because I'm I'm getting people saying we haven't got audio. I'm hearing audio. Do we not have, not audio? have audio? I got audio. We got audio. Cantrell, sorry, you need to turn your computer up. <laughs> There's a mute button. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's the mute button on the. Uh, there we go. On the video. Sorry for that interruption, Grant. It's no just, problem. You know, if you've been watching our program for long, you know that we're real estate investors first. Mm -hmm. Mark marketers first, real investors, real estate investors second. <laughs> we got to stop drinking before these shows. <laughs> uh, anyway, you don't know what's back, in here. <laughs> back back, sorry, my apologies. Back to it. We can cut that out in post. Because this isn't live. Because this isn't live, right? I don't know what happened. All my com comments just disappeared. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to steer the conversation in the way of, hey, we are a uh, real estate investor selling a house with seller financing to somebody, right? Holding the mortgage with them. When we start talking about having uh, good paper in that way, not only does it mean, hey, this was closed through an attorney. We've got actual documents that are saying. You know, look, we're we've got a, a note, a deed of trust is the document I was talking about earlier that says, hey, if they don't pay the note like they're supposed to, you get to foreclose on them. But also sending them through an RMLO, having having proper Dodd Frank compliance is going to be part of good paper whenever you're selling a note to somebody. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's jump in and kind of talk about why you might want to sell the note and what benefits that might be to you. So again, you know, you hear me all the time talking about the long-term benefits of having seller financed mortgages. It's all about cash flow. My company's name is creativecashflow.com. Subtle plug. Um, so it's all about the cash flow. It's all about making sure that we've got that long-term income coming in for us. But in a lot of ways, uh, well, I shouldn't say in a lot of ways. I'll say it this way. I talk about a lot about today money versus tomorrow money. I'm a big proponent of tomorrow money. I want you to have that money that's coming in long term. But tomorrow money doesn't pay you groceries. You can't or pay your groceries. You can't, you know, go to your your car payment 
and say, hey, do uh, you know how much I'm worth? And then they accept that as your car payment. That's not how it works, right? You've got to have today money and tomorrow money. There has to be a good mixture, and that's one of the reasons why I always encourage you to have a bat belt, that's what I call it. You've got to have different tools for different situations. A lot of times, people might get distracted or detracted from doing a seller finance mortgage because they're saying, look, Grant, you're, you're talking about having uh, income over 20 years, 30 years, blah, 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 blah. I need cash now. It's my money, and I need it now. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 cash now. Why are you giving somebody else a plug? <laughs> Subtle plug for J.G. Wentworth. Um, so what happens is you may have properties that have some equity in them, okay? You might owe a lender $50,000, but your buyer owes you $90,000. That not only is going to be what, what uh, affects your net worth, but that's your little piggy bank. If you ever need some today money, you have the ability to go out and sell that note and liquidate and make some money right then and there. I do that every so once in a while. I also have a model based entirely around creating owner financed mortgages and then selling the note. And we might get into that. Actually, I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, note model. I'm going to get back to that at the end of this. But when you're selling your note, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, you're going to have a mortgage with your buyer. You've fixed up a house. You sell the house to an owner occupant, they give you a 10% down payment, which is a nice bump into your pocket, right? You get, let's say, a $100,000 house, because I'm stupid, I don't like doing hard percentages. Let's say you get a 10% down payment. I just want to point out, if you live in DFW and you find a $100,000 house, good on you. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah they, they're there. Do you want them is the question. Um, so, $100,000 house, you get a 10% down payment, that's 10000 bucks right there, mm -hmm. right? Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are doing wholesale deals for $10,000 or less. Well, the beauty of the owner financing note is that, hey, you got $10,000 up front and you're getting a few hundred dollars every month in cash flow. Because you have a $90,000 note. You got a $90,000 note with them. So they might be paying you 90 grand, right? You're going to be getting a payment of, let's say, $750 a month and you're paying your lender $400 a month. So you've got $350 coming in every month in cash flow. But let's say six months from now, you decide, you know what, I could really use some cash right? And it sucks. I'm sitting here. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting $350 a month, but man, I really wish I could capture that $40,000, that, lump sum. that yeah. lump sum that's in between what this guy owes me and what I owe my bank. That's where the note sale comes into play. And that's how we're going to talk about uh, note sales today. So what I want the topics that I want to go over today, A, we just kind of got out of the way of what a note sale is. Mm -hmm. B, I want to discuss how those discounts work when from a technical standpoint, when you're selling that note, uh, what should you expect to sell that note for? Okay, because you are gonna have to sell it at a discount if you're liquidating. Uh, and then we're gonna touch on uh, some kind of creative ways to go about creating this kind of stuff. We've got some time. Kristen Gerst brought up a really good model on Monday night uh, about creating a couple notes, selling one, keeping the other. We'll, we'll address that too, just so that that gets in front of people as well. So let's go over to our wonderful Vanna White whiteboard and while we do that I just want to say like I know there's some audio issues but I think there's also some Facebook issues so you know it is what it is Facebook hates us yeah I think uh, because it's not letting us see comments like right even now. comments aren't even pulling up so yeah. you know keep the love coming um, you know take your right headphone out if it's only coming out of the left uh, <laughs> it is what it is sure yeah I think Facebook is messing with us okay Facebook loves us they love the people that pay for their product no kidding right um, okay so let's run some numbers here because as you guys know I'm a number centric guy when you come to the grant teach me some things you should expect to get real and actionable uh, blah, 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 actionable information what we talk about on Wednesdays is gonna be the real deal what we talk about on Wednesdays we're not skirting this is not motivational I'm not here to make you feel good about doing real estate I'm here to let you know how real estate unlike works. every other day here we're just here to you know <laughs> Well, no, I'm comparing to other podcasts. That's how Propelio rolls in general. Okay, so let's use that example that I was hitting out a second ago. So we've got a $90,000 mortgage to our end buyer, okay? That's the person who bought the property from us. We're going to sell it to them at 9.5% interest for 30 years. That means that their payment to us is going to be $756 a month. How many and, years? Uh, 30 years. So you said six what? Uh, Seven hundred and fifty-six dollars. That's their payment to us. 
So this is a good mortgage for us. This is something that we like. Now I'm going to take a little bit of an extreme example here in saying that we only owe 50 on it. I know that there's going to be tighter margins here, but that's one of those things where, hey, when we're learning a concept, one of the things I like to do is give you an extreme, okay? Because when you get the extreme, that helps you understand the concept without any of the complications. Once you understand that concept, then we can start introducing some complications in uh, to where you can calculate things out, figure it out from there. So we have a $756 a month payment coming in on $90,000 of a mortgage at 9.5%. Okay? We got 10% down, which means that right up front, we get 10 grand in our pocket, which is pretty sweet. Now we're gonna pay some fees out of that. We might pay a realtor to have brought us a buyer or something like that, but typically you're netting uh, basically four to 7% of your down payment in your pocket. So in my extreme, we're gonna say that we owe somebody $50,000. Because that's what we sold. We sold for 100. But maybe but, we bought for but 50. But we bought at 50. Let's say that our, our, our underlying lien, I always abbreviate this as UL, okay? So my underlying lien, the thing that we owe on the property, when we talk about uh, deals like this, I always want you to follow the dollars. I want you to look at money in and money out. We've got money in, it's what we just talked about. Now we're gonna talk about our money out. What are we having to pay for this asset? So we are having to pay a $50,000 note. Now I'm gonna say that we have to pay that $50,000 note at 6%, okay? Just to kind of split the difference of what we might have with a private mortgage and what we might, like as in, hey, somebody has lent you the money, somebody, another investor that you've met at a club has lent you the money to do this versus if you're doing it sub two, you might be in at 3%, 4%. And we're gonna say that there's 20 years left on that underlying mortgage. So that would mean that the payment that we are paying out is $358 a month, okay? So in this scenario. Is it 358? 358, mm-hmm. In this scenario, we are cash flowing almost $400, $397 a month, okay? That's our cash flow on this mortgage, which is pretty typical. I'm typically, every door I'm getting between $350 to $500 a month on cash flow on these properties. Now that's really cool. Three or $400 a month is really cool, but we're gonna say six months rolls by and you need money for something. You need some cash for something, whatever that might be, okay? Maybe you've, uh, you're really just hammering away and your marketing is just killing it right now. You're like, dude, I wanna throw some more money at marketing you might be able to cash this out. So how are we gonna cash this out? Well, let's look at our, uh, our mortgages that we've got. This is our mortgage coming in, right? We've got $90,000 coming in at 9.5% for 30 years, which is a $756 payment. And you said cash flow is like four something? It's right under 400. Let's just call it 400 for ease of use here. Cash flow, 400. So again, cash flow 400, because that's basically a free property at that point, mm -hmm. is still awesome, but we're talking about walking away with lump sum. Right, exactly. You've got to balance your today money and your tomorrow money. So we're going to turn this tomorrow money into today money with a cash, with a, with a, uh, so, a liquidation event. Okay, all in all, getting in 756 for 30 years, 358 out, for 20 years, uh -huh. cash flow 400. And if you've watched prior grants, he says something's, I can't remember which episode, but if you remember this, obviously the last 10 years of this, right. you're getting the full lump sum, which is awesome. Let me, let me show you just a real quick on that note. This is, this is a good topic to just, so that we have a basis of comparison. If we were to hold this mortgage, this nine and a half mortgage with our, with our uh, uh, end buyer for the maturity of the note, which happens, more often than you would think. Uh, in owner financing, most of the time, people retain, uh, remain in their property the entirety of the loan. Whereas us in, the, in our circle of friends probably think, hey, you're gonna be in and out of a house within five or seven years. The owner finance buyers are typically paying their loans off to maturity. Now, if you were in this mortgage the entire time, the money that this would bring in total would be $272,000. I'm rounding down. It's really 272, 437. Now that's money in total. Let's look at our money out total. That would be $50,000 at 6% for uh, 20 years. Our money out total would be $86,000. Okay. Which is less. Which is less. Yeah. So 272 minus 86. If 
we were to just hold this asset through the maturity of the mortgage, my mortgage, we would be making a net profit of $196,000. Okay, there's a $186,000 difference here and we got a $10,000 down payment up front. Right. It's $196,000 net profit on an asset that was only worth a hundred and we only had $50,000 in equity on whenever we started the business, right? Right. And then on this, we're not even talking about down payments, cash on cash returns. We're just talking about blanket numbers. Right. You know, 190 is better than zero because essentially you have zero out of pocket on this. You do. Yeah. Typically you've got zero out of pocket because you can not only, if there is money that's needed for the deal, you can get it through private money through so. lenders. So that's our kind of baseline, right? We're understanding that if we were to hold this for the maturity, we'd be making $196,000. Can we make a, I'm going to make a little small note up here. Yeah. I just, I just, I think people get, yeah, if you hold it, you make good money with cool. I would put a cash flow of 400 for whatever. Okay. You know, and cash flow. I think, 400. I think if you don't know by now, I think everybody can agree the benefits of cash flow period. Yeah. Obviously, over the long length of this whole thing, Absolutely. you're going to make a shit ton of money. So for comparison, we've got this here. Now what we want to do is we want to look at a liquidation event. We want to say, hey, for whatever reason, I want to be able to sell this mortgage, okay, and get my $40,000 of equity out. And, and I just want to point out, at this point, people should be scratch, scratching their heads why would anybody get rid of that? Why would anybody huh. get rid of that? Yeah. The reasons being is maybe there's a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's an appreciation or not appreciation wouldn't matter here, but maybe, maybe you want to go to Disneyland. Right. Maybe you got a hot new husband, a hot new wife, and you want to splurge on some jewelry. <laughs> the reasons are who cares? Right. We're not talking about reasons of why you'd get rid of that. It We're is, just it is what how it to is. do it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll give you one twip, one twip. Why can't I talk today? I swear, I don't even drink. I don't do anything. I'm boring. This is this is decaf. <laughs> um, so uh, one reason why I sell notes, and I'll just give you this tip right now, is that I have a lot of notes where I might only be making a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars a month on it, but I've got seventy five thousand dollars in equity. Right. So if I run into a situation where it's like, ooh, I could really make some good money if I had a lump sum, then I sell those notes because I'm not giving up very much cash flow at all, it might have taken me 10 years to get the same amount of cash flow that I'm gonna get by selling this note today. Right, and, and again, that could be another reasoning of, it's like, look, yeah, I'm only getting 100, $150 right. cash flow. In the long run, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of money, sure. but you know, but the headache of waiting for the check. But it's my using, money and I want it now. Right, but if you're using like a servicer <laughs> like August REI, yeah. you probably don't even have, to, you're not even aware of all that. Right. So it's all good. Right. See, you're getting that. I get nothing. Over I know there. There, that's just people joining. I don't get any comments. Anyway, well, um, give us love. Give us texts. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I've got my phone on me. If you've got anyway, my phone number. Anyway, so now we're so, we, we've already established holding the note baseline is awesome. So what I want to establish now is verbiage. When I say that we are going to, uh, when I'm talking about our equity in the note world, I'm comparing what our underlying lien is versus our mortgage to our end buyer. So in this case, we owed 50 and we were owed 90. So our equity is $40,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when somebody is going to buy a note from you, they're going to buy a note from you based on something called your unpaid principal balance. You're going to see that abbreviated as UPB. UPB is your unpaid principal balance. And that is what everything is based off of. They're going to buy as a percentage of that. As we, we as investors, we're looking at a percentage versus our ARV. As a note buyer, they're looking at the percentage based off of the UPB, okay? ARV meaning after repair value. And this is one of those standard acronyms. If you throw it out, people meet, go, oh, I know what they're they, talking about. They will know exactly what you mean if you say and, UPB. And, and the reason that's important, we literally were just having this conversation in the office the other day, not about notes, but about dealing with uh, commercial brokers. Uh -huh. And uh, the conversation arose, it's like, you know, when you're dealing with commercial brokers, they're gonna treat you like shit because you don't know anything. But if you can come back at them with the proper verbiage <clears throat> and the proper, your numbers don't make sense, da, 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 then they're like, oh, we're dealing with somebody real. Right. So we had a situation where the easy math, the, the, the sale was 3 million. We're like, uh, this should be not even close. Baseline numbers using that, it should be not even close to that. And they're like, okay, yeah, but it's, it's 1.6 million. So they basically came <laughs> ah, down <wow>. half. <laughs> they came down one and a half a good million. Trick 
just because you use the right verbiage. I need you to teach me some negotiation. Well, just, well, that's no, awesome. No, well, the thing is, even at one and a half million for that deal, yeah, it was still it's, too much. it's, well, we don't know yet. We're yeah. still, they're just now sending us the actual documents right, on right. how to actually and analyze and actually do your due diligence. Yeah, but my point there is, you know, part of being a real estate investor is knowing the verbiage. Right. So UPB. Unpaid principal balance. Unpaid prince uh, principal prince, uh, prince, principal uh, principal bow <laughs> i know how to spell it's comedic ref I do it for comedy okay so here's what we're uh, travion i'm going to throw you for a loop here i'm going to make you do something that might be weird but we're going to we're going to make it work here can i get is this camera live over here yeah. okay i'm going to put something in front of this camera and we're going to see if people can people can see it. I don't know if this is going to work or not. You should be able to see it right here. Well, I'm behind the, do you want me to use that one? Okay. Oh, there you go. Can you see that? No. Yeah. Okay. You can come in a little bit more. This, this right here. Okay, good. Yeah. I can see the screen from here. Cool. This right here is an amortization schedule. Okay. This is what an amortization schedule looks like. And I want you guys to burn this image into your memory. That red line, is the percentage of interest being paid every month. That blue line is the percentage of principal being paid every month. And that green shaded area is the uh, uh, overall principal balance. Now, this is for our $90,000 note. What you can see right here at the bottom is you can see the terms, that's $90,000, 30 years, 12 payments a year, nine and a half percent interest, that's $756 a month. What I'm pointing out here is that when people are making their payments on a monthly basis, their first payment, look at that first payment, $756 payment, interest alone is $712.50. Principal is only 44 bucks, okay? So there is right there, that is the power, that is the power of uh, uh, interest. That's why we're doing this. Because we can't see comments, I'll ask a question. Is that an app? Is that a website? Is that proprietary? I, what is that? I use the calculator. It's called the 10B2 calculator. It's like six or seven bucks on the App Store, both iOS and Android. It's 10BII. That's the financial mm -hmm. calculator that I'm always in. When you when you look at your amortization schedule, you can hit share and it'll show you that. Ca that, that. Stichia, can you remind us after this to drop a link for that? Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, you don't need to do it. I'm going to let him find it. Yeah, no, that it's, way a, it's a great app. It's the lifeblood of this business. You have to know how to use this. Not so subtle plug. In my academy, I've got a whole, a whole lesson on how to use a financial calculator the right way for this. But that's what we're using here. The reason I'm showing you that, the reason I'm showing you how this works with interest and everything is the fact that if we want to sell our note and our note's value is based off of the unpaid principal balance, the side effect of the fact that barely anything is touching their principal on their payments means that their principal stays about $90,000. Their principal doesn't hit $88,000 until three years in. It takes them three years to pay $2,000 off on their mortgage. Okay. That's so painful. It's so painful. This is one of the mind blowing moments that all of my students have whenever we're going through these classes is that they start understanding, holy crap. Did you guys know Wells Fargo and Bank of America, I've looked at their, their income statements a couple years ago. I don't know what it is at this point in time, but a couple years ago, their income was n over 90% of their income was based off of mortgage interest. And you know what interest rate they're charging? Like four. <laughs> four. We're charging nine and a half percent. So that means every Super Bowl commercial you've ever seen, every ATM you see placed, every branch you see, every employee that you're looking at, every corporate balance or corporate building that you see from those guys was paid for off of mortgages that they're charging 4% interest for. Don't you think that's a good business to be in? <laughs> you know, when we're charging nine and a half is the going rate for it. And this is why right here. So when we're talking about selling a note and we're talking about selling it as a percentage of our unpaid principal balance. Well, guess what? For those first couple of years, we're making tons of money. You, you heard me say it takes 36 months for them to buy down $2,000 on their balance. Well, it's a $756 payment. That means that in that 36 months, you will have brought in $27,243. $2,000 of that was 
in actual principal. So you have a net profit of $25,000 purely in interest in that first three years. So I'm, we don't plan this out. This is obviously a, a <laughs> right. situation where it's like, if I got a light, light bulb moment, it's like, you know, I kind of ruined the show for him. So what I'm immediately thinking as far as strategies go, get, get this thing in place, mm -hmm. season it for two to three years, yep. get the bulk of the, the, the money, the interest, mm -hmm. and then sell it to like Kristen Gertz or something. Absolutely. Or Grant Kemp. Or Grant, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> or Mitch Steven. Or Mitch Steven. Actually, or, does Mitch buy notes? I don't know, I don't think but Mitch I'm sure notes. everybody buys notes. I buy notes. Scott Carson. Shh, I buy notes. <laughs> I'm just playing. None out. of those no, people. Scott Carson, Only Grant Kim. Kristen Gerst is awesome too. She's she's at these events. Uh, really, anybody. We'll get you good prices for it. But of those, like those are going to be like me and Kristen can buy it basically. Grant's like, I'm the one fucking here. <laughs> Sell it to me. Anyway, Kristen right. and myself are able to buy it basically the same values, and uh, that's because we've got good buyers behind us. We're essentially brokering, but a lot of a lot of buyers are going to want a, a larger discount. But we're going to get into that here in just so, a second. So real quick, I think we've established that UPB stands for unpaid for well. Right. And and where you were, what you brought up is exactly why I was going down that road. So you I didn't did. throw it off the rails. The uh, the thing is, is that there's a legitimate strategy here to hey, we're going to make a ton of interest and not even touch our principal. So let's make some interest and then sell our note. Now, when a note buyer buys your note, they are going to be buying it as a percentage of that unpaid principal balance. So somebody like me or Kristen is going to be able to get you in about 90% of your UPB if you've seasoned that note for a few months, two, three, six months, something like that. Okay, You're going to be able to get somewhere in that 87 to 92% range, depending on how good your paper is. Remember our definition of paper from the beginning. You've got to have good paper to get good rates from it. Mm -hmm. If you do not, for, for example, if you don't run your loan through an RMLO, even if you, the RMLO, the SAFE Act doesn't apply to you, because SAFE Act hits, hits at five houses, RESPA hits at three houses. Even if you legally don't need to use an RMLO, if you don't use that RMLO, and then you try to sell that mortgage to somebody, you're gonna get an offer in the low 70s. If you use an RMLO, you're gonna get an offer in that 87 to 92% range of your UPB. Huge difference for a $700 or $850 fee that your buyer pays for. Do yeah, it. We literally just had this conversation yesterday as well because Did you? Uh, you know, cause Daniel, we were looking at a property to do the whole owner finance thing with the person and then, oh, then somebody's like, well, they could sell the note. And he's like, well, they could, but they couldn't. And they're like, well, why is that? He's like, well, because, well, because first of all, let me just disclaimer, we're looking from the buyer standpoint, right. not the seller standpoint. And it's the seller's job to get all that due diligence and all that stuff right. in place. So he was just saying how, even if it is Daniel, the paper is almost, it's not worthless, but from a note buying standpoint, right. it's, what's a better word than worthless? It's uh, worth less. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just not ideal because worth there less. was there was no R RMLO, yeah. there was no super due diligence, there was no like crazy um, right. um, package that goes behind right. it. It's just like, yeah, I'll buy it. Yeah. And yeah, there's the legal documents in place, right. but the things that make a note sexy to a note buyer is all the this person's going to pay. Mm -hmm. And those things are easy to get done. Right. So what note buyers are looking for, if you run into Joe Schmo note buyer, uh, they're typically looking for like a 10 to 13 percent yield on their money, okay? And can, can we define that for us? That Lane? yield is is basically what is the the income. And I'm sorry, I don't have a great definition of it, um, but it's basically their their interest income that they're getting as a percentage, okay? So the way that we're going to find that is just like we run in our calculator. Um, we have to look at we we have to look at four things to find a payment. And Travion, can we zoom? Can we zoom back into the screen again? I'm going to show this calculator uh, uh, to everybody. Okay, so this is what our calculator looks like. Now you see that top row right there: N I slash Y R P V P M T F V. We're not going to worry about that one. But the other ones, N stands for number of payments. So this is a 30-year mortgage, which means 360 months. I slash Y R. We're doing a nine and a half percent interest. P V. $90,000. We're saying, I, I call that principal value. It's more easy for a real estate investor to understand. It really stands for present value. And then PMT stands for payment. Okay. So I want you guys to understand this because this is very crucial to 
how it all works whenever we're finding out what our discount is. Right now, I ran this calculation saying, hey, we're going to get a $90,000 note at 9.5%. That means that our payment will be $756 a month. Now, if there is a note buyer that wants to buy this note from you and they need to make a, let's say, 13% yield, going on the high end here, okay? They want their money to make them 13%. What they're going to do is they're going to say how many payments are left in this mortgage. We started out as a 30 year mortgage, it was 360 payments. How many payments are left? If you're selling it six months in, it would be 354. But we're gonna, we're gonna just run it as 360. We're gonna say we're selling it from day one, which is very unlikely, but we're gonna say we're selling it from day one. We sold it to our buyer at nine and a half percent. That was our essentially our yield that we were selling it to, which made a $756 payment at $90,000. Now, when we're selling that note, our note buyer wants that, seven, that same $756 payment. They want that same $756 payment to make them a 13% yield. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna calculate all this stuff in. They're gonna put, hey, there's 30 years left on it. It's making me $756 a month, but I want 13% yield. So I'm gonna put that 13 into I slash YR. And then I'm gonna hit the PV button to solve for the principal value. If you had a note buyer that wanted to get a 13% yield, okay, they would buy that note from you for $68,000. They would buy that note from you for $68,000. What that means for them, let's look at now, let's kind of shift the momentum a little bit and look at what that means for them. Okay, let's say Ryan has this mortgage with an end buyer. Joe has has bought Ryan's house. Joe is paying Ryan $90,000 at 9.5% interest for $756 a month. Ryan wants 40 grand. He wants to capture as much of that equity as he can. So Ryan comes to me and says, hey, Grant. Well, not Grant, because I pay more than this. But hey, not Grant. See my subtle plug. Hey, not Grant. I want to capture my equity. I want to sell you my note. So not Grant is going to buy that note from him. Not Grant wants a 13% interest. So not Grant runs his calculations and we says- We got it, it's not Grant. That's my name, it's not Grant. <laughs> my name is not Grant. Um, <laughs> is, is gonna say, okay, Ryan, I'll buy that note from you for $68,000. Mm -hmm. Let's say Ryan's cash. cool with that. Cash, all cash, cash money. So Ryan's and, cool with that. And by doing that, I'm capturing, going back to the analogy before, I'm capturing that 40,000 equity. You're capturing as much of that 40,000 equity as you can, Got because it. I'm gonna say, Ryan, I'll pay you $68,000 to buy that note from you. Ryan's gonna say, that's cool with me, because I owe $50,000 to my lender. Ah, because out of that 68, 50 gotta go, ooh. Okay. So Ryan is gonna make a cool $18,000 next week plus the 10 that I got the plus the 10 that you got at the beginning So this whole deal I'm getting 28 which is mm -hmm. which is a lot less than 196, 196. <laughs> but you're making $28,000 in four months right versus making 196 in 30, 30 years, years. right it. that's the balance that we're we're striking here so Ryan's gonna say okay I'm cool with that I could use another $18,000 I already made 10 so I'm gonna make $28,000 total on this deal by selling it to you this way I am going to pay Ryan, or I'm going to put $68,000 into the title company because this will go through a title closing. And then title is going to take 50 of that and pay off the lien that we talked about earlier and take 18 of that and give that to Ryan. Ryan has now profited $28,000. At that point in time, not Grant sends a note to uh, the, the, the buyer. There's other paperwork that goes along with this and I'm not going into super details on it, mm -hmm. that essentially says, hey, you're no longer paying Ryan, you're now paying Not Grant, you're 756 a month. And just, just to back up, just to keep it really grade school, the, you know, 68 minus the 50 is 18. And the reason we got 28 is because we got that 10,000 at the down payment. Correct. Just throwing it out there. Perfect. My, my concentration has gone because my marker's leaking. Oh no. Anyway, sorry. Um, so at that point in time, Joe stops, Schmo. Joe Schmo stops paying Ryan and starts sending his check to me every month, that $756, right? Because we're not changing his payment. His payment is a fixed rate mortgage. But his payment of 756 now is making me 13% because I paid $68,000 for it versus where it was making him 9.5% because it was for a $90,000 mortgage. Mm -hmm. That is right here, if I, had, if I was buying that note from him, I might say, hey, I'll pay you $68,000 for your note, or I might say, 
uh, I will buy your note from you for 76% of your UPB. Okay, $68,000 is 76% of $90,000. Mm -hmm. So that would be a 76% UPB purchase. Does that, is that if hitting? it was still at the 90. Right, we're because saying it, hypothetically that we're selling it from your, day one. But going back to what you are showing before, the first two years, 99.999% right. of the payments right. go towards the totally. interest. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason the percentage of the UPB comes to play mm -hmm. is say there's $89,300 and you're offering 73% of the UPB, mm -hmm. you're saying 73% of the whatever, the whatever I just said, mm -hmm. and that's where this number comes from. Right. Got it. Correct. So you Sorry. Were, no, that, I, I got to dumb this shit down. I'm glad you're rehashing it. So you're, you're either going to get your offer one of two ways. We will pay you 76% of your UPB or we will pay you $68,000. Typically, it's going to be a percentage of the UPB because that UPB is going to be different by the time you get to closing mm -hmm. as it is from when you started the process, most likely because there will be earned interest and then there will, uh, uh, if another payment comes in, that's going to affect that, right? So real quick, I feel like there, this is a great opportunity to throw this in there because there was a question that's since now gone, <laughs> but I did see it. Uh, I think it was Micah or Michael, but he was asking, what does season the note mean? Oh, thank you for telling, or thank you for asking that. That's a great question. Man, and I wish we had comments on this because it really does. There, there's um, there's several. Yeah, just, there's a lot of refresh over and over. There's a lot of questions. Them. Or this is something that's Seasoning going to have a lot though, of. Though. So seasoning a note means you need to show that your note buyer can pay on time for a certain amount of time. Okay, so when I say season the note, I mean that typically you need to show that for three, four, five, six months, your buyer has paid on time every month. That's part of the security that the note buyer wants to see. The note buyer wants to see, hey, Ryan has a mortgage for $90,000 at 9.5%. I need to be secured in knowing that this guy's actually gonna pay that mortgage. So step one is, did they go through an RMLO? Did they go through a real closing? Do they have good paper? Step two is, prove to me over a six month period that Joe Schmo can pay on time every month. And now we are much more secured. You also have to factor in the fact that as a note buyer, they're looking at, they want a maximum of 90% LTV on that mortgage. So in other words, we took a 10% down payment. We need that 10% down payment because we need to show our note buyer that our owner occupant has skin in the game. They put some money into it, right? The note buyer needs to see that the mortgage with your owner occupant is at maximum 90% of the value of the home. Their LTV, their loan to value is a maximum of 90%. Okay. So that's how seasoning works. That's how that LTV works. So we have another question that you're able yeah, to? Yeah. Uh, well, awesome. first of all, I just want to just disclaim for you that Grant is neither a CPA, mm -hmm. Uh, an accountant, a lawyer, a financial counselor on any right. level. I'm just that really being looking. said, Air Merges, Grant, are you doing an installment sale for tax purposes? Uh, well, not necessarily, but yes. I mean, that's, that is something that you take into account. So thank you for giving me that disclaimer. Uh, please take that to heart. Here's the thing. You get short-term and, sh and long-term capital gains. Your long-term capital gains are far less than your short-term capital gains. And what that means is that in order for you to get a long-term cap gain, you have to accept payments for more than 12 months. If you sell the note on 12 months and three days, you now have long-term cap gains that you pay on your, on your income, which I think, and, I, and I'm completely blanking right now, but isn't it 20, 24% on long-term cap gains, I think? And oh, like, I'm not even, oh, oh, okay. oh shit. I literally, literally just- I know, I, I would like, know it if it go. wasn't right now. I've got, I'm just blanking on it. But your, the, the, the moral of the story is uh, your, your short-term cap gains are much higher than your long-term cap gains. So that's something that you do need to factor in, and I'm glad that Aaron brought that up. But that's a little bit more of advanced, you know, theory inside of what, when you would be deciding to sell these notes. If you sell your note within the first year, you're going to accept short-term capital gains on whatever that large amount is that you're, you're collecting. And that may offset the fact, like you may, be, you may be much wiser to wait another six months to get to 12 months so that you can accept a lower tax rate and then more is going into your pocket. R Richard Ewell had a great question. He was asking, is there a, a note exchange? And like now, a, now the now the comment's gone, but I, I'm, I'm guessing you know how like MLS, like you have MLS. houses, but like yeah. is there a note exchange, a reputable note exchange for notes? Yeah, um, it's called uh, if you go to to your email and you open it up and you type in mail at creativecashflow.com. <laughs> it's 
send your note there. That's where. No, uh, th here's the thing: is I don't know of a of a reputable uh, online note exchange. Scott Carson might be the closest thing to that, right. uh, but I don't really know how his system what, works. Here's the thing: is is in real estate investing in general, I think the social, the Facebook, mm -hmm. is the way to go for any kind of off market type situation. Um, all you gotta do is, is I'm sh I don't, I'm not a part of any note groups right. on Facebook, but I'm sure there are tons of them. There's yeah. tons of wholesaling, tons of flipping, tons of apartments. Go on there and be like, is Grant Camp reputable? Is yeah. Scott Carson reputable? And, you know, Chris and Gertz. Who? And then, or just go in there and be like, or oh, hey, I've got a note that this is what I want, right. and I'm sure you'll get hit up. Yeah. Um, so that's the easiest, at least in my mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not that experienced with notes. I've only been a part of one note sale ever, sure. and I was a very. I was like an office admin on the back end. Nice. Um, Matt Acock, he had some nice words. I wish I could read it to you verbatim, but he was like, "This is by far the best." Something oh. explanation of something. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Matt. I think we were talking about season and notes, but uh, <laughs> good, good. Or, Thanks, or Matt. maybe the discount. Yeah, or, and just explaining in general. Or something. He, good. He was giving you props for something. Thank you, Matt. But and Matt Acock, by the way, is an excellent attorney. If you yeah. guys need an attorney, I, I do recommend you re reach so. out to him because he understands this kind of stuff. So here's here's how we're gonna round third base. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna bring it home with this. We've been going for long enough. I'll push off to another Grant. Teach me something to talk about some Delete, other topics on this. Keep. Let's keep this up here for okay. just right now, okay? So this is saying, and let's delete this, delete. We're, we're such computer nerds. Um, let's take this off. This is gonna say at 13%, because that's what I ran the numbers on, you're gonna make that. Now, here's what I wanna get the point across to you about, is that you want note buyers that need a lower yield, because the lower yield they need, the more money they are willing to pay for your note. Okay, so I went with the high end here as 13%, but let's say that a note buyer needed a 10% yield. Okay. Okay. Well, same type of thing. Remember, I buy the note, Joe Schmo is now gonna pay me instead of Ryan, they're gonna pay me $756 a month for I'm acting like we're selling it on day one, so there's 30 years left. So let me guess, this is what you're at. Uh, yeah, I actually can even beat that sometimes. Well, well Ryan Harper is at nine. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, I, I, my, uh, I, I'm typically buying closer into the six to eight range. Um, well, I'm at five. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm not. Um, that was a joke. I, I'm not. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's look at a 10% yield. If somebody was wanting a 10% yield, we're going to put 10 into our I slash YR. We're going to hit PV. And guess what? Now... That note buyer that wants 10%, they're willing to pay $86,000 for that note. Okay. Which is more. Which is more. So now you see the significant difference between only 3% here, right? There's only a 3% difference between these two offers. But the 13% yield will buy it at 68%. The 10% yield will pay you 86%. From that 86, you have to take out 50 that you owe the bank. So you now are making $36,000 from that sale and you made 40 or I'm sorry, you made another $10,000 on your down payment. So you end up with a net profit of $46,000 with this, which is more. Which <laughs> I love it. <laughs> which is more, significantly more. This is why having a good note buyer is so important. Having a Kristen, having a Grant, having people that are able to have low yield buyers because the Joe Schmo note buyer wants that 12, 13%. So if I'm a new note person or I just didn't own a finance deal and I want to offload, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm dabbling, but I'm not full in with August REI and I, I want to season it for a couple months, uh -huh. whatever, or two years, and I want to get rid of it. What's the right verbiage? It's like, hey, Grant, great. I have a note for you. What, what yield do you buy at? Mm -hmm. is, is that the kind of questions? And then what percentage of UPB do you buy at? Is that the, is yeah, that the verbiage so, you would use in a conversation? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. More, uh, when I'm talking to note buyers, the question I'm asking first and foremost is what kind of yield are they looking for? Because mm -hmm. they should know that answer. They may not tell you your percentage of UPB because that might not matter. But how I would follow that up is okay somebody says i want a 10 percent yield and i can say okay well if i was able to get it get you a 10 percent yield are you able to buy your notes at 100 percent of the upb because that's something that a lot of note buyers just like we want to buy on a discount even if they're hit like say that you've got a six percent yield guy 
he's still gonna want a discount on that note. He might be buying it for 96% or 94% or something like that, just because that adds, you know, that we should expect to take a, a, a discount on our notes. That should be expected, okay? So because it's expected, well, shoot, if they can make 10 or 12 on it, awesome, and still give you that, you know what I mean? So my first question is, what yield do you need? Mm -hmm. If they come at me with something like eight, I'm like, sweet, that's awesome. So if I can get you an eight yield, are you able to buy at 100% of the UPB? Their response will likely be if it's seasoned long enough, right? If it's if it's got good seasoning and it's got good paper, I can give you 100%. What typically, which is very very unlikely. Typically I in the out. market, what is good seasoning? Uh, typically in the market, good seasoning is a, is a year. Okay. Okay seasoning is six months. Okay. You're doing phenomenally if you find somebody that's going to buy that note from you from day one at any kind of reasonable reasonable rate. Right. Just because. Um, it, because a they don't if you don't have a working relationship with the person right. maybe they don't trust the paper because mm -hmm. the whole point of seasoning is to establish the, the paper right prove the, the security yeah the you've got to, to secure that investment so this is how that note sale is going to work and again you should expect like i said at the beginning of this you should expect to sell your note for somewhere between 86 and 92 percent of your upb mm -hmm. but the only times that i've gotten 100 percent of my upb or more is if that note has been seasoned for a couple, three years. If I season my notes for two or three years, I've got on-time on payments, everything, then my note buyers are typically like, okay, cool, this is a pretty solid note, we're, we're good to move forward with it, and they'll give us that large amount. But this is what we're looking at here. Now, there are some other cool ways that you can go about doing things that I'm not gonna get into today. We'll save this for another week, but what you can do is you can sell partial notes. Okay, I'm throwing out some stuff that's gonna be way over a lot of people's heads that it I might was be. Gonna, I was gonna say something earlier, not just to be like, oh, look at me, but just to, because, so say in this situation, you do have somebody buys at 13%, and you know, maybe they, I don't know, but you could split this note up to where mm -hmm. maybe you can have this guy and this guy, or this gal and this gal, and A little or bit, whatever. yeah, yeah. Or you that's keep getting, one, you right, keep the exactly. second. Right, exactly, that's more common. So yeah. what would happen is that you've got a note for $90,000 at 9.5% in 30 years, you may choose to say, I will sell you the next 10 years worth of payments for X amount, right? That's basically right. how a partial works. So you sell them the next 10 years, and then in 10 years you start making payments again. Or like Kristen's method, which is a very solid method as well, is instead of doing a $90,000 mortgage with them, you do a 70,000, or I'm sorry, a $75,000 mortgage and a $15,000 mortgage, a first and a second lien, mm -hmm. and then sell that first lien. By selling that first lien, you should get enough to pay off your underlying mortgage, and then you keep that second lien. You might make $150 a month but you don't have any debt on it. And if that debt was from a private lender, well, guess what? You've now cashed them out and you get to churn their money again and create a new note with another deal. So here's, here, not to get too far and mm -hmm. do too left field, but say I don't do the second lien method and I just do the first lien method mm -hmm. or whatever, but maybe I'm only, and we talked about, I think, believe it was nine and a half percent. That's what this right. uh, uh -huh. note was. Uh -huh. Can I sell only 8% of it and keep 1.5% in my pocket? Um, that's a really good question and I don't know the answer to that. You Ooh. have stumped me. Grant, stump me! <laughs> because what you would need for that to work is you would need somebody who needs an eight yield. And you would basically, as I see it, be bringing them in as a partner on the deal. But that's an interesting way to think about it that I haven't considered yet. So yeah, Grant stumped me to today. All right, well I, I think know. there's a couple, I know there was yeah, one let's see if about we can the, the 10B2 calculator. Um, I don't know if somebody was asking about that or wanted to find that. I know we will be dropping a link for what that is, but it's basically a financial calculator. Yeah, right? it's just a financial calculator. Uh, and it's 10BII is how you're gonna spell that to get to it. Um, Ooh, Richard has a good great question. question. Yeah, non-performing is a different ball game. Yeah, non-performing, you will not get anywhere near these kinds yeah. of, these kinds of non numbers. Non-performing is basically buying, you know how like a, a, well, you may not know Richard, but and maybe I don't know either. But say I owe a debtor some money, <laughs> hypothetically. And then that debtor is tired of calling me for that money. And then they sell that to somebody else for pennies on the dollar. And then they hypothetically call me. And then they sell that debt to somebody else. And it keeps going down, down, down. That's basically non-performing. And mm -hmm. they're paying it for pennies on the dollar. Um, the, is that essentially the, yeah, what it is? Yeah, the trade-off is like, to be extreme again, let's say that that note was not performing. Well, you might get 30% of the UPB, uh, just for throwing a number out there, uh, or 30 to 50% of that UPB, and you're just, get, you're just done with it. Now, the new person is taking on all the hassle of the collections and foreclosure process and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, totally different ballgame with uh, uh, non-performing. That 
Abbreviation is going to be NPN, non-performing notes. You'll see people asking for NPNs. Yeah, in Lara, yeah, exactly. You know, the big risk of doing a, a second lean like we, and again, we didn't get into it. We just kind of like, you know, soft it out there just mm -hmm. to, hey, mm -hmm. we know shit. Um, yeah, exactly. If there's a foreclosure, you get wiped out. But that's why you need, that's why there's a risk in it. And you don't do it unless you are comfortable in doing that. Right. And um, I'm going to refresh yet again. I know, right? Oh, man, I tried to scroll and it Facebook went away. Facebook loves us. Ah, oh, it loves me again. Let me rush okay. one more time. Russian, Russian Hyming. Grant, question it. If you have an NPV, uh, okay, uh, I'm actually not familiar with that one. I'm assuming that was a non-performing something. I don't know. Uh, and you foreclose. You as the note owner are only entitled to the unpaid balance, right? Anything over that goes to some of your fees, but may go to the clerk, of course, as an overage due to the original buyer. That is correct. So if you have a mortgage with somebody and they owe you $90,000 and they stop paying you and you foreclose on them and you go to the courthouse steps, at the courthouse steps, the auction occurs and then somebody is willing to pay $100,000 for that property. Well, 90 goes to you, three, four, five goes to the attorneys for all the attorney's fees that are owed on that. But then that remaining five goes to the owner. Okay, that is a protection, at least in Texas, that occurs for the owner of the property in a foreclosure scenario. And Richard, going back to your question, yes, as the buyer, yes, you could look for, for a significant discount. That being said, you've got to keep in mind that at some point the bank or whoever's the holding of the note, because it's non-performing, you have a real asset attached to it. So unlike in the scenario of Hi, Ryan hypothetically owing money on a credit card where what are they going to do come after me and, and take chop off a pinky you know they're not going to do that but when you have a house attached eventually they will foreclose and go through the legal process of getting their house back so to be able to purchase a non-performing note it has to be sweet enough to where people will sell it to you but at the same time discounted enough to where you as a buyer are fully aware that once you get it, you have to go through the time, the effort, the hassle of kicking that person out of the house. Mm -hmm. Another strategy on top of that would be, once you have secured that non-performing note, go back into the homeowner, and this is, you know, again, I'm not a whatever, going back to that homeowner, renegotiate, renegotiate all the terms, make nice with them, they may like you because you're not a bank, and you know they may be full of shit and three months later you're back in the situation where you got to kick them out so those are things you have to consider do you have any thoughts on that what i just talked about uh no, no. <laughs> i'm i'm sure they are all perfect <laughs> i'm trying to frantically refresh and read through and see if we can get uh but i think that we've got stuff so um so to profit you got to buy an npn probably under 50 percent, hopefully at a quarter yeah you're you're basically in that 30 to 50 percent note uh range for non-performing notes and i think that we've really addressed everything here i just want to just want to say matt has quite the ringing endorsement i'm very happy about Did that you thanks like that? thank you matt um it, it, once you read it it was better than it's my, very nice it was better than my this is quite possibly the best explanation of discounting notes to meet the yield requirements of investors very well done always enjoy having grant on the show uh, I just had to get that out there so I could feel really good about myself. Um, and I think that we've, I think that we've, we've gotten all of these. Uh, Marco, thank you for the love. What's an ideal percentage to sell a note for, what to aim for? Yeah, so we talked about that. Like, if you're selling to me, you should be, with a seasoning of six months, I should be able to get you somewhere between 86 and 92, uh, 92% of, of the UPB. UPB. Yeah. We learn stuff. We learn and stuff. Uh, did you answer Jaime? So to pro yeah, you just did. Yeah. And I do appreciate there's apparently some good stuff going on back here with the video, people looking over the fence and stuff. Yeah, okay. okay, well, cool. Well, I think that we've hammered away at some really cool stuff here today. We've, we've taught a lot on how the note sales work. It's a, uh, it's a topic that's really not that difficult once you really uh, you know, yeah. get, get it explained to you, but it's kind of that mysterious topic. I'm glad you said it like that because real estate really is yeah. one of those things where it's, it's not that difficult. It's just there's so many um, uh, elements, there's so many bricks in the wall that mm -hmm. it, it is next to impossible to learn all of them. But once you start bringing them in, you're like, holy shit. That's why Daniel is such a genius, because he just like consumes this stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and I'm not saying that just because he's my boss. But it's he true, really though. is. I mean, that's like, one of the you, things that separates him. If you have a conversation him. with him, uh, once you get past the fear that he's going to beat you up, <laughs> 
<laughs> and you just listen to him, you're like, oh my God, he's so knowledgeable yeah, about this stuff. He really is. He knows um, so much about so you know, much. So just, just pick up a book, read it. Pick up another book, mm -hmm. read it, and just start applying this stuff. But it really is simple. And, and, and here's my moment of the typical raw, raw work. It's, it, all it is is do the work. It's, it is. It's, it's, you know, if you have a situation like this, and you're like, okay, I think this could ha help out. You know what you do if you don't know? You can either A, go it on your own, or you call a Grant, you call a Kristen, you call a Scott, you call a Daniel, mm -hmm. um, you call me, probably not. Um, but anyway, yeah. but you know, you call these people, hey, I have this thing, what would it take to work together? And in real estate, everybody is willing to work with somebody if it's... As long as you're bringing a deal to the table. Exactly. If you're bringing something to the table, that's all it takes to really... I mean, that's how I got hooked up with Scott as being my mentor, is I brought a lot to the table and he, he you know, poured into me and now I'm in a position where I can pour into other people. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about uh, how this business works is that it is, it's a, it's not, what's the opposite? It's not scarcity, it's what? It's, it's, a, it's a plentiful, there's, a, there's plenty to go around, right? Like mm -hmm. we, one of the, the uh, uh, calling cards of a newer investor is like, ah, this is mine. But it's not, like those of us that are at the top, it's very open. We're working with each other and, and getting things you done. You know what, Richard, I like your idea. So if we've got 30 something people watching right now, if I can get every single one of y'all just to click share, I don't need, you don't need to share it to a group. You don't need to share it to anything. Just click share to your wall. Um, just click share real quick and get it out there. Um, and then we'll figure out a way to uh, do a book giveaway. Uh, lately, I've been on a Gary V kick. Okay. So I'm going to give away one of his Gary V books. Cool. Um, I just don't know which one because off the top of my head, I forgot which one I'm currently reading. Awesome. The cheap one. The cheap one. <laughs> the cheapest one. Well, guys. So, so yeah. anyway, everybody share. Everybody Abundance. like. What's that? Abundance mentality. That's what I was looking for. Thanks, Daniel and, mm. and Jason. So if I can get some shares out there, again, don't share it to groups. Just share it to your page. I got 10. Give me some likes. Give me some loves. That's what we do it here because, you know, we're all about the likes and the loves and the hearts and the shares. Yeah. And then, ooh, what was this? Uh-oh. More comments. Something unrelated real estate, but you guys should have a high-pitched voice over for Grant. Grant Man, Grant wait, you don't like mine? I you don't like yours. my Grant Teachers yeah. like that? I'll just uh, uh, do it. FCI Exchange and Watermark have some NPNs, uh, but you have to really know your stuff and you're going to be buying the, uh, if you're going to be buying those. Yeah, NPNs can be, can be rough. And like with anything, everything that you're hearing me talk about, ever, anything you hear anybody talk about is going to sound like a great idea, okay? Well, not everything you'll but things that sound like a great idea, don't get too distracted by shiny things. Everything, I really liked how Ian uh, uh, Flanagan said this. I was talking to him on, on Monday. He's a sharp guy, by the way, I like Ian. Um, you know, he, he kept mentioning everything takes time, energy, and effort, right? No matter what you're gonna do, it takes time, energy, and effort. And you've gotta pour that time and energy and effort into it, it nothing is easy. If there was any one of these strategies that was like super easy and just made a bunch of money, we'd all be doing it. I know that's cliche to say, but it's true. So just understand, yeah, people make tons of money in MPNs, but there's also tons of risk. The reason they're buying at 30% is because that, that percentage is offsetting the large amount of risk that's going into it. But that's a, that's a totally different topic. What we're talking about is let's create some notes and let's sell those notes to capture our equity on these things. So I'm gonna give away a book to the first person that says in the comments, I like Grant's whatever you insert. Mm. So oh. I like Grant's blank and you and you <laughs> insert something and let's keep this PG-13. Let's keep it G. <laughs> <laughs> or R. It's okay. The first person says I like Grant's something. We'll, we'll in the comments go away. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Nobody anyway, yeah, they're like we don't uh, want I'll the book you, that much, dude. Yeah. Well, there's one. <laughs> Boom. Well, Daniel, right. you don't count. That's funny. Well, cool, guys. Uh, anyway, well, while we're waiting going. on that, I do want to just, I like Grant's generosity. Awesome. Thanks. Well, and Laura, she, she, start, she was first. Oh, there we Daniel. go. I like Grant's Excellent, clear, clear explanations. explanations. Boom. Thank you, Laura. You, you get a book. I will contact you off, off this, and we'll get going. Hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back again on Friday. I don't know the calendar in front of me, so I don't know what that is, but we'll get, have something. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of this. Uh, if you have questions further about what we talked about today, we are often checking our comments. We are very active on here because we want it to be more of a community versus, you know, Grant coming up here and, hey, give me your shit. It's not about plugs. It's about uh, exchange of knowledge. Right. So 
please keep asking questions. We'll get those answered. Thanks for tuning in. And also shoot messages. Like you can be friends with us on Facebook. Shoot me a message. If there's something you want to learn about, shoot me a message. Put it on here and maybe we'll talk about it. What? He's so full of shit. When he first, <laughs> when Grant first <laughs> opened up his Facebook to business, he was like, Brian, I hate you. <laughs> I did. I just, yeah, it's, 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 a different, it's a different anyway. animal. That's true. Any uh, um, grain of cash flow plug? So yeah, so that said, even though we try not to do this as plugs, I, you know, hey, we, I do drive over an hour every day to get here one way. This, is a, uh, this isn't a concerted effort. And uh, if you like what you're seeing here, I, I would. I would ask that you go to creativecashflow.com. Check out what we got there. I've got a whole academy that trains you from start to finish on all of this kind of stuff that, you know, same kind of explanations I'm doing here, except the difference is, on creative cash flow, it's a one through, well, you know, one, two, three, four step. Whereas here, it's me driving in saying, hmm, I wonder what I'm going to talk about today. Shh, don't <laughs> tell them the secrets. There was a text last night. Yeah, there was. We were we were on top of things last night. So yeah, I'd love to have you over there. Uh, and again, always message us yeah. and and let us know if you've got questions, that kind of stuff. We want to address it. And then for and Propelio. For Propelio, if you are currently a subscriber, thank you. Thanks for being a part of what we got going on here. If you have never tried Propelio, I strongly encourage you to go to Propelio propelio.com uh, we have a free trial where you can literally get in there do everything there is to do there play with it break it whatever try to break it I should say um, play with the lead list play with the the, the access to MLS comps um, sign up to get a free website well it's not free you're I mean it's part of the whole well it's free if you're doing a trial <laughs> anyway <laughs> but we got not. lead lists we got websites we've got uh, the access to MLS comps you have access to uh, a deal finder from MLS. Um, so there's a lot of tools there. Highly recommend to go to Propelio. Check it out. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, but you know, and if you don't like Propelio now on Facebook, give us a like and we'll see. Did I get it all? I think you got it all. Yeah. Do you oh, have any I events coming I, up or anything? Nah, I got a schedule. I'm already getting hit up. Like, hey, what's the next event? Uh, like, oh. Well, hold on. Manuel says, am I invisible? That, that leads me to think that he might have said something that we missed. Manuel, did we miss something? Well, I am going to say, yeah, you're invisible. Sorry, man. Am I invisible? <laughs> I like Grant's glasses, Roy. Yeah, I don't see anything. Roy, from where were you oh, Monday, wait. man? Anyway. Yeah, no, it's I don't see anything. Okay, well, I just pulled us right out of it. So let's pull right back into rearing this out. Anyway, we're it. out of here. All right, see you guys. Oh, slow-mo high five. All right. uh